So, uh, uh, Alan Jude, uh, who works at uh, Scale Engine and does the BSD Now po uh, TV podcast, uh, he uh, came to me and um, I said, hey, we need to get this boot environment stuff going in the bootloader. Uh, it's something that we've been trying for a long time. Boot, boot environments is where you can ZFS snapshot your system, do an upgrade, and then it goes horribly wrong, and then you can just roll back to the previous snapshot. Um, oh, sorry. So I've got some code that I can actually show, um, and Alan Jude gave me the okay. We're going to show this off so that we can... I can show you guys boot environments in the boot menu. So I'll do it twice. I'll do it once for that left hand side of the room and one again for the other side. Uh, say again? What is that the R boot environment? Okay, so a uh, boot environment is nothing more than a user land and a kernel. So if you're going to upgrade your system, that entails uh, replacing your user land and your kernel. So if, if you make a ZFS snapshot prior beforehand, uh, the upgrade, then you can go back to your old kernel and old user land if anything goes wrong. So a boot environment is, well, it's just uh, at the boot of your machine, you're choosing what your environment is. Call money is a kernel on your phone. So it's, it, it's pick your kernel. Right now you can pick your kernel. You're saying pick oh, your yes. kernel and we'll... Yeah, it was about uh, two or three years ago I did the um, modification allowing you to select your kernel. Um, now we've got uh, the ability to select your root. Um, also, uh, you'll see something else that's different in my boot process. I have a Jelly encrypted uh, disk but it's prompting me at the bootloader for the password rather than waiting until the kernel boots and then burying the prompt. <laughs> With, oh yeah, that's uh, my favorite feature. Asynchronous, yeah, so you have to enter your password and then you know it, it doesn't prompt wait, wait, you. What was, the, what was the feature? Oh, oh, this this you're looking at is at the bottom of the screen it says Jelly Password. Yes. So it's recognized that my disk is encrypted and it's prompting me at the bootloader. You still see the BIOS post message yes. here. Uh, so as soon as I type that, then you'll see the next menu that I wanted to show you. So that's another enhancement that's only in head right now. It's it's set to be merged into cool. ten uh, in like three days. Hmm. Jelly password is the problem. So now I'll type it. Oh, and also as you type, you know, there's a little spinner that kind of spins. And so you can't see a password. This right, right, password right. right. So it used to be that you had like asterisks that were showing up on the screen, and now it's. Um, a little spinner that kind of shows up, and you can press Control U and it clears the buffer. Uh, and now it supports up to 255 characters for that password now. Because of you. Yes. All right. So um, now I've got the boot screen up. Uh, normal ones you've seen before: kernel and configure boot options. But there's a new one at the bottom: configure the boot environment. So see the new uh, mm -hmm. item uh, number seven: configure boot environment. So how this works is that uh, the fourth layer picks up a uh, new file in slash boot called bootenv.rc, which would be generated by the BEADM utility. BEADM is the utility for administering your boot environments. BEADM, administer. Uh, so here if I hit seven and I go into the menu, uh, here's display, displaying uh, a couple of different entries. If I actually select them, then you'll see the, uh, the top level choice item will change. So here I'll, I'll just, uh, yeah, let's see. so if I hit three, four, five, see this item change? And then so four, three, four, two, see this change? Three, four, five. If I were to just hit enter at this point, then it would uh, boot with that environment. So it does, does it work really for the JFS? Yes. Uh, actually, it could work for anything, but um, I'll, I'll talk to Alan too. That's a good point. Yes, is that the BEADM utility should recognize that you have uh, UFS instead of ZFS. And because all we're really doing is we're playing with the ZFS that that mount from. What is BEADM? BEADM? Yeah, but it's It's a utility, I think it's in ports, it's not in the base. And what it does is basically it does the ZFS snapshot for you and would generate the file for the bootloader. So it gets a short name and a, a long value. So in the menu, you see the short name. Uh, in the uh, choice item number two, you see the long value that it actually sets. I'm going to go back to uh, three, which is the active one. It always remembers the active one that you booted from in case you make a choice and you weren't happy with it. And then, of course, then it boots. And uh, it's jail encrypted, but it will not stop the boot process because the bootloader passed off the password to the kernel. And, of course, making sure it's zeroed everything as well. And so here we are, we're booting. It's actually bringing up the jelly right now. It's a great word, jelly. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, so who wants to write the program called peanut butter? <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. Um, let's see. There's a couple of uh, talking points I wanted to get some opinions from. Somebody brought it to my attention that regardless of whether the bootloader prompts you for the password or if the kernel prompts you for the password, there's a problem. It's going to expect you have a US keyboard because no syscon's work has been done yet. So if you, uh, what, what people are reporting to me is that when they have a jelly encrypted laptop, which is the root base is, is encrypted, they have to memorize how to type the US layout on their Russian keyboard. Because the keys that they're typing aren't going to produce the letters that they're wanting. So we, we, we have a problem, a big problem. All of our international customers can't type their password unless they're familiar with how the US layout is. How do we solve this? They can solve it. They're the ones that need to type in. <laughs> I mean, how is no, this I'm even sorry, remotely so the, possible so the problem, to solve? So the bootloader needs to know about keyboard maps. Yes. That's the, at the end of the day. Yeah. Right? And so um, someone has to sit down and write key map support for the bootloader and then have that be an option. And then have the key, that, that option percolate down through kernel environment okay. to the kernel so that uh, unless you override it like in rc.com, whatever you set as your keyboard layout in the, in the loader, uh, appears through syscons or BT. Yeah, we so need to have like a loader.conf tunable that we can actually yeah. have dropped in there that will, yeah. 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 So, 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 so someone just has to do the, the work on, on loader to do that. Okay. And it's more fucked up than that um, because you only need to do that for keyboards and not serial tokens. Right? Because right. not yes. all input devices yes. are going to be three. <laughs> All right, filtering. serial's going to be WYSIWYG. It's yes, what you said is what you get. Whatever your keyboard is. So, so this is why this is more annoying than it sounds, because like, so I need to type in a jelly password into my UK keyboard, but it's a US password, and my finger memory to the layout, right. and then my, I use an at symbol or a double quote, what do I do? Exactly. And so um, I don't think you should solve that particular problem. I think you, what you should do is focus on the teaching uh, the, the, the loader keyboard environment about, um, about uh, key maps. Okay. I have no idea whether the BIOS keyboard input routines which we're currently using mm -hmm. will do the right thing. So, so what, what you guys have seen so far, right. you, you think I can let that one slide and put it on I the back burner and come go and commit this stuff? For the time being, like, they, can, they can go the other, the other way. They can, they can delay the passphrase until yeah. The kernel's pretty right. I think that makes a that's lot still, more sense. That still works. It's just well, done. but the thing you is have to get past your mount root prompt. No, but the point is, is so the, the point at the moment is, is we currently don't support then encrypting everything. Right. right. That's yeah. So you're not making not it any worse for technique. everybody else. You're solving the first piece. Right. So I think you should still just solve the first piece and then say, okay, now we get to see can the key the BIOS keyboard calls that you're making spit out like scan codes, or are you going to have to actually, um, like, I, I tell you what, how about I go look at the boot loader code? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, now, now that you're saying this, I'm wondering if it's actually The other thing that occurs to me is... It gets worse when, than uh, sorry, just having key maps, uh, because what you know, then the Chinese guys come and say, I want an input method. Or like the guy from the last bay plug. I uh, made this keyboard all by myself. That's fine. I don't remember, no. I don't remember that guy. But no. Um, I do. <laughs> 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 Some question. Right, I do. No, no, question. Uh, uh, How no, does like Linux or And that was said like something or, or, nobody right, would know what it was. Right. So, so, so one thing that occurs to me is. Crap, I had it. Damn it. I want you to keep your thought because I, I need to get refresh it again. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, oh. the system all in one place and everything is connected to the yeah, but you, you had a suggestion for the boot environment. Oh, yeah, right, non-ZFS, right, non-ZFS. I got it. Yeah. Right okay. there. So it's doing, it is doing a BIOS call to grab the keyboard press. Right, and then my question is, okay, that's fine, that's what it's doing for the traditional bootloader, but what about for EFI boot? And that's the other half of the problem. Yeah, what, and then, what, so also, and then what, are we doing for, what are we doing for the Raspberry Pi? Mm -hmm. What are we doing for, here, for Cal, Cal PC? I think like, that's why nobody's ever solved the problem. So fuck it, just do the minimum <laughs> subset that you can solve and then say, okay, do the next bit. Right, yeah. Otherwise, you just end up going, I have to solve all these things at once, fuck it, I'm going to the next. Yes. Yeah. Right, so, yeah. I don't want to hear the word that starts with a G. I, I don't want to hear that word. Grub? Grub. 
So oh, you said no, it. No, but the point. So, so like, so it's real than Grub. If we if we want to use, if, I'm pretty sure if Grub Grub would have done the same thing I'm thinking, which is if the BIOS read routines isn't returning what you need, mm -hmm. then you just have to write a fucking keyboard driver in the in the loader, which means you have to like deal with that crap. Don't try to deal with that crap and just commit like just improve this. Yeah. See if anyone is interested in evaluating whether the BIOS calls give you everything you need. I'm pretty sure they do. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Try it. See what happens. Okay. So PCB is scrub based, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 And here's an interesting thought. What if you could just uh, do the password in scan codes instead of. Uh, in what? Oh, in scan codes uh, instead of actually being yeah. characters. That's interesting. No, so the, 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 the question, question is whether the scan codes you're getting from the. Uh, uh, well, I, I, I wonder if the if from this so the person that's interpreting it is Colin. So I, I'm a conduit for Colin. Yeah. So I don't know if Colin's actually booted far enough to know what to do with a scan code. No, no, no. So, so the problem with scan codes is that um, there are extended scan codes when you start speaking weird non-English languages like Japanese or Chinese, where mm -hmm. the you have multiple modifiers for each key, and so your key can suddenly spit right. out lots, and so those scan codes are very large numbers. I have no idea if the BIOS routines actually handle that at all, mm -hmm. right? Well, and, my, and my, the, I did a little bit of this work a long time yeah. ago, and, and what was always a nightmare was the damn modifier keys. Yes, so, but the thing is, is that, that then you just sit down and you say, okay, I'm gonna have to hack the bootload to just print out scan codes, and then you see if the BIOS gives you the right outputs, mm -hmm. or whether you have to write a keyboard driver and actually interpret each of the, the modifiers. Because, for example, I don't get FN events via scan codes, but I get FN key presses via ACPI, <laughs> right? Because yeah. the FN key press is supposed to modify this, these well, blue on, keys. On laptops, yes. Right, and yeah. these blue keys are not necessarily keyboard presses, but maybe they are. But some of those, some of those keyboard presses come via ACPI. Some of those keyboard presses come via the device driver, and everything. It's a bleak fine. existence. So it's that's a, fine. It's like bleak. So you just commit you think, what you do, and you get think twenty-five years get after a couple, you know. Get a couple of people from Eastern Europe. They seem to have no need for sleep. And drink <laughs> infinite amounts of coffee. And, I'll have to make a trip to Euro BSD Con. Yeah, yeah. So yes, go to Euro BSD Con. Yeah. Go to ba go to BSD Con and say, hey, like grab like grab one of them who who has uses like a Russian keyboard day to day. Yeah. And have have no kids and mm -hmm. stay up eighteen hours a day <laughs> and see if they'll help you figure out the keyboard input okay. in the loader. Like the keyboard part is easy. That is trivial. That's just a whole bunch of like logic at a table. It's mm -hmm. more just do you have to write your own keyboard driver or can you just use the BIOS calls? Hopefully you can just yeah, use the It's a little private hot hell if you have to drive a driver for every keyboard. No, no, no. See, so luckily you wouldn't have to, but the, 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 the tricky bit about it is having to handle multiple input types. For example, here it does the BIOS call, and um, you need to decide early on, are you going to deal with the BIOS input method, or are you going to deal with keyboard scanning method? You have to pick one. You can't do both. Or yeah. you'll end up with double presses. Well, I have to, have to use a knob in loader.com. Right, right. And it's like, so if someone, somebody attaches a USB keyboard, suddenly the key presses aren't coming in as pretend scan codes. That was in his example. Right? They're coming in, <laughs> they're coming in via emulated yes. BIOS. And me, as I said, hopefully there's a bias, like either we're using the right method or there's an extended method you can use to get like the, all the scan codes you need and then everything is done. Yeah. Let me finish. I mean, I would we'll help put a you test, with this. We'll put a test on the screen that says press the letter A. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, the 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 um the keyboard probe code isn't all that. Sorry, the keyboard code for it, like bit C get char isn't that hard, right? You could probably add something in the generic motor code that reports the last scan code from the driver in in a fourth variable, and you could just have a bit of fourth mm -hmm. print out whenever that value changes, and then you just run a function that. The X is when you hit Control C, and you just mash the keyboard and see what scan codes it gives you. Okay. Right. So I'd start. But I'd start there, so you can at least evaluate it. All right. right? Well, well, thanks for letting me pre present. Uh, on, on a related note, um, oh. at one point we had some relatively hard limits on the size of the loader, mm -hmm. and I'm wondering if those are still applicable. Ah. So why I, am I know this? Okay. okay. <laughs> last last week, I did a, 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 the deepest dive I've ever done on the bootloader scripts. And uh, I, 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 mea culpa, I'm sorry, but um, back in 2011 when I, I first, well, I, it was my first commit, when I, I brought in like 3,000 new lines of fourth, um, mm. I caused a lot of problems. Mm. Uh, I, I didn't at the time understand dictionary segregation. Right. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw this. I saw this make go in. So, so he's, right. No, no. But I'm not talking about the fourth part of things. I'm talking about. I'm talking about the actual. Okay. The size so, of the load so, of binary. So, 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 so oh, okay. the, the problems, the challenges according to Alfred are, um, with the Intel, no. with the 32-64-bit classic loader. Right. We load the kernel into a fixed address. I yeah. don't think we do relocation there. Right. Uh, so, so the code size is fixed because we have. 640k load memory minus some for the stack, right? Right, and then we put the heap way fucking up in top memory, so we can actually put the heap at the top of physical memory and everything is fine. Right, so and then the heap is infinite effectively. Is the L word going to come out? But the stack is <laughs> not right. Yeah, and the reason for that, because I, and again, why I know this just makes me want to stab out my eyes, is because all of the BIOS calls use stack variables. No one actually wrote a routine. That explicitly said, I would like some temporary memory from the low mem so I can do BIOS calls. And so when I was using Malik and then setting up Visa shit in Malik memory, it wouldn't work because all the BIOS calls and all the Maliks were kind of like BIOSes need memory under one meg, right? Effectively. Right. So right. we should tidy that up. And then we can put the uh, the stack wherever we want to and the stack stops being a problem. But we still have the problem of code fitting there, and the kernel gets loaded at a fixed address. We can't move that without changing the kernel's load address, right. which means that we break other people's shit with we're not careful. Right. For EFI, John just committed a bunch of shit to make it so we could put it anywhere. Yeah, I think I saw right. that. Yeah, so that yeah, we could have bigger EFI bootloaders. But I don't right. know what we have to do for, um, for, the, traditional. for the traditional one. And I, so I, I, I can't, the but reason I going? Give, yeah, the reason why I give fucks about it is because I'm looking at adding the, the Visa frame buffer stuff. Okay. Right, and that adds like 45k or 50k of binary code to the loader. And then it gives you a nice frame buffer, like, like big resolution, and it works on everything, and whatever. But it, it does add a little bit of code, and so at right. some point maybe we need to move the kernel right. around. I, I remember one thing that was, that I found yeah. kind of funny is that the, uh, the come on up the reason. Oh. Yeah.